is your <laughs> and you're like where you said Oguema oh my god very carnal statement i don't know you and uncle laulu i don't know how i know both of you i need to go and meet more spiritual people in my life oh my god laulu is the one that made me lose my faith oh my god oh my god but it's not Osha proper. It's not. It's no more Osha proper. It's Ogwema Sha proper. Proper. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Proper. 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 So you're your all girl with Sha proper. Okay. I'll yeah, I'll try to proper. learn. I'll try to learn that. But I'm, I'm very very Ibadan-ish. So the Yoruba just. Ogwema Sha proper. Hi there, David. <laughs> Oh, okay, so I will start from here. So, I've been trying to do some CIA work. Well, I don't know if I really, really tried, but I tried to do some CIA work. And um, I know you're from Ocean State. You're from Bogo, and I'm happy because I'm from Ocean State. So, I'm doing whoop whoop to Ocean yeah. State, though, but not. Yeah, but, but which part of Ocean are you from? I'm from Ileife. Like we are the original Ocean people. Okay, don't let me be proud. So that. Okay. <laughs> I won't, I won't even say anything because I, I've, seen, I've seen somebody from KBC online. I won't talk. You, know, you, you, you should you should not talk because KBC is from my family compound. So don't even don't even say anything. Like don't. No, no comment. I'm yeah. Great Amazing. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let me start from here. Um, you're an Estes surveyor. So how did that transmit into music? Like, I'm, I'm trying to think that you probably would have said, okay, you have this. Did you have like a, like, you know how we, we millennials have this five-year plan, six-year plan, 10-year plan, and we try to follow it like in total. So how did you trans, how was that transmission like for you? Well, for me, there was, there was not a case of transmission. It was just what, what came to me easily is music. Okay. I mean, from when I was in school, secondary school to to when I started to okay. go wayward and and all my uh, <laughs> different different experiments. Okay, I don't know why it's cracking. Well, it's really, really cracking up a lot. It's it's a, it's the network of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm sorry. But yes, this one was like perfect though. Yesterday was super, super perfect though. Okay, let's try this again. Is this better? Yes, it's better. Yeah, I tell, I tell you what, Apple, Apple Airports, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it was not a case of, you know, transition or transiting or transcending or transcrossing. Okay. It's just, what, it's just what comes to me naturally is music. So I, re, I always knew somehow I'd end up in music. And and then we had a family history of music. But what I would be doing with music or entertainment, I didn't really know. Okay. You know, until the Jesus part came in. But, I mean, I knew I'd been in music. But, you know, then my generation was a case of, ah, I'm going to go to school. I mean, yeah. for those who don't understand Europe, I mean, ah, you go to school, you must get a certificate first. What do you mean? Nah, 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 nah. So... Um, I had to deal with that. Okay. You know, which is, uh, and I ended up, I stumbled into SD management. Actually, I wasn't planning to do SD management. Oh. Uh, yeah, but after my sojourn from London, I mean, I've, I've, I went to technical college three years. Yeah. This fitting, this fitting and machining in the Osho Bo Technical College. Wow. That was, that was a horrid experience. Wow. I went to FedEx, where FedEx was taking a diploma. Wow. Um, Thinking that would get me into the university, that didn't work. Then did one diploma thing in Ife that didn't work, because I love Ife with all my heart. I mean, great Ife. I love that university. I just, I mean, Ife just, Ife just does it for me, anytime. Mm. And then that didn't work. So in between, you know, Federal Polytechnic and and you know, what do we do next? Someone, you know, brought up Cross State Polytechnic, and I was like, oh, another Polytechnic. Oh, it happened there, got there, went to school there, you know, got serious with Jesus there, 
And that's why they used to call you Fred, Fred Armand, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, at least in, in our local assembly there, on, on the Redeemed Church there, you know. Wow. Because of the size, and then because I try, I try to sound like um, one of you, but somebody. Which I never, <laughs> I never, I never to pull off properly. Wow, wow, that's, that's amazing. So I would say that music has always been like in the family. Your mom was like head choir in St. Peter Arimo. So it has yes, been so like... How are you, how are you doing from proper digging, have you? I told you that I did CIA work. <laughs> I, your, your, in fact, your fiancé is in trouble. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot like well, we have the Holy Spirit that can do that one, though. Like, you know. Oh, yeah, right. The Holy Spirit yeah, always right. do that CIA work for us. But, yeah. And, um... I would say that once you're born into a music family, it's always like 90% of the time, even if you're not like an active music person, it's always been in you. So for you going to school, like going through all those odds of life and everything and going to the UK, coming back, starting, starting up. So let's start from there. What was starting up like for you? Like the brand Big B, like what was starting up from the... Because I, I, I've I seen a lot of your old pictures, all that tie, white shirt, like... <laughs> I've seen all those old... <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, with those old pictures... Yeah. The time, the time of those old pictures, I was... Um, how do I put it? The time of those pictures, I was relatively big for that time. You know? I mean, some people see my baby pictures are like, Wow, you look like this on your baby. And I'm like, okay, imagine the generation like this. Wow. You know? It's it's amazing. It's amazing. So so when did the brand Big B start from? Like because the the, the topic is the I want to blow syndrome and it's it's just um how will I call it? The network is super amazing. Yesterday we had a test run. The test run was so perfect. Like people, the network was so perfect last week, uh, yesterday. Like when I say super perfect, it was super perfect. So I have no idea why it is opting out like this, but we will had a big B back on on the show. Um, yeah, we need to, oh my God. Okay, so let me have Big B back on the show. I think it's not in the same place it was yesterday. I think it was it was home yesterday, I believe. Mm. You want me back? Okay, welcome, okay, sir. Welcome. Sorry, people. I mean, just take note that when a call comes in, that might happen. Oh, so, okay, a call. Okay. Yeah, so it might take me away for a bit. That that's one of the disadvantages of our Nigeria. Network. It's not. It's not a sharp proper yet. Okay, so so okay, people in Facebook said they're getting it. So the question I was asking. Okay, I'm getting the yeah. feedback. Mm. Mm. The feedback will just stop. Frank is still welcome. Okay. So my question was, if we are talking about the, if we're talking about the I want to blow syndrome. We're talking about people not understanding the process, right? So how was the brand Big B, how did it come together? Yeah, so bad. Oh, okay. So I think we have to add him up again. It is super, super messy. Like, no, 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 no. We can't work with that. Yeah, the feedback is really, really, really much. It's really, really, really much, and I can't use a hair. I can't use headphones because um, it would distort the fact that people will not be able to hear me on on any other part of the platform. So we need to um, go off, go on. I don't know why it's doing like this. Yesterday's um, yesterday's test run was perfect. It was super, super perfect. Moz, how are you doing? Yes, yes, yes. Moz, 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 people. People, if you don't know Moz, I don't know why you don't know Moz. That's what I would say. <laughs> Man of Zion, welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. No, it's not because I have two devices. No, because it's not. They are two different things. I have three devices, actually, and they're not doing too much. So if it's using the same for two places, then it will have a feedback. Um, but if if it's something that let me what 
so one device doesn't well let me just let me play let's continue enjoying the Feedback is very messy. And I'm hearing myself late, and it's breaking up. Okay, you heard yourself late, and it's breaking up. Yeah. Did you? Did you? Are you using any earphones? No, I'm not. I'm taking away all the earphones. Uh, holy Ghost. Um, okay. we'll just wait. Wait. Let me. Let me. Let me restart again. Okay. Okay. So I will, I will just ask, probably I'll just ask my question and allow you to, to answer. So I was asking, when did the brand Big B start off from? I would say that you didn't start off from um what they call it from rcg you said from sort of the spirit ministries of uh, bishop francis wale okay yeah you know my my journey my journey started my journey actually started from um good shepherd church cnn yeah i was i was terrible with all the attire and everything you know and then traveled, came back, and because of the way I was, my mom thought going to Agbalatura would be the best bet, you know, pray fast, Adura. Yep. I so I been to Agbalatura several so times. <laughs> yeah, so I ended up in his house, stayed, stayed in the house for quite a bit, wow. you know, which is, which is why I'm a bit close to the Abiaras, you know, it's not for anything, it's just that. And then, you know, we were driving past one day, and I said, oh, this is my old school, Loyola. And right beside Loyola then was Bishop Wadley's headquarters. And I'm like, wow. Mommy, more like it. You know, you more like it. You know, you more like it. You make nice, bro. And she was like, eh, you like it, so you go? Ah, oh, yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, and that's how I ended up, you know, seeing Bishop Wadley, okay, and I'm like, I love the way you talk. And he looked at me funny like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. It was in my church over the weekend, though. Is it? It was in my church over the weekend. He's, he's amazing, amazing, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Um, he's in London right now. Simple to the core, but carries, carries so much presence and power. Amazing. You know? So being a full time gospel being a full time gospel minister, would you say that it's easy? It's not easy. 
Mm. And and I say that with all with all all sense of humility. It's not easy, but it's attainable. Mm. Um, and really, nothing in life is easy. I mean, working in Tasty Penny is not easy. Working in McDonald's is not easy. Mm. You know, driving a black taxi or a white taxi is not easy. Coming mm. to Canada is not easy. You know what I mean? Even waking up in Canada is not easy. It's a, it's a conscious decision you make every day to just keep pushing at it. So nothing is easy. But people just assume that you know once you mention the name of Jesus, people will bend over heels and just come at you. It doesn't happen like that, you know. Like Pastor Tui Ademola was in Nigeria over the weekend for leadership seminar, and he shared a story that cracked me up. You know, Nigerian pastor, African pastor, just gets to America. And he's wondering why the congregation are not tugging at him to carry their bags. You know the normal thing where pastor is carrying like four bags and the congregation member is, hi, you know, and kneeling down. You know, so they're in a supermarket and he's buying everything, put it in the bags, and they're just looking at him like, pastor, when you're done, let me know. You know, at the end of the day, he voices out like, why are you people not carrying my bags? And the lady looks at him like, excuse me, sir. Here, yeah, the men carry the bags. <laughs> you know? Now, to that pastor, ministry was hard. But he just didn't understand that he was in this different territory and different culture. Hmm. So, lesson one, gospel music is a different culture, is a different tribe. You can't run it the way you run any other kind of music. You can't. You can apply some basic rules of music. You can apply some basic rules of business. You can I, I, I apply some basic rules of administration. But you can't apply the same thesis hmm. that would apply to other musicians to what you do, which you do, you know. I do a song and then you think, yep, the whole world has to run after me. You're crazy, man. So, to answer your question in a short form, no, it's not easy, but it's attainable. Hmm. Hmm. And my next question will be this. So... You see people that just start up like in music and they say, I want to be like this person, I want to be like this person, I want to. Um, when I had when I had Bruce Eddie in January on exclusive chats, he said it was as bad as people he trained would start saying, Oh, she Edward, um, Momo, no, no, she sound. And these are people that came to train with him. So do you think that the old mentor mentee tradition that you used to have in the past is still works now? I think I think it works. But this I would say um don't let me say this generation. A generation don't understand what being a mentor or a mentee is. Hmm. You know, I've had people who I know their beginning, who I know how they grew, who I can call my daughters, who I can call my... I've had them look at me and say, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm happy you're doing well, you know, I'm, I'm happy for you. you know, And I smile at them thinking, see this one, yeah. you keep saying that to tomorrow and the person will keep going, you know, higher and further. And then you see young cats who will say, oh, I want you to be my mentor. And killing, but they're not really looking for a mentor. They're looking for a platform, hmm. <clears throat> you know. Because, for example, you know, I during this last my last concert, I had I had a few strong words for a few people. Some of them are still angry, but it's okay. You call me a mentor, and you say, "Oh, I sh I'm not giving you an opportunity on my to come and sing and turn it up," which is fine. Turn it up is a small concert we do. It's fine, right? And then. I look at your page. I don't see anything about turning it up on your page. I don't see my flyer. I don't see my handbill. I don't see any info from you saying, hey, you know, as little as $1, here it is, to support what you do, you know. How many years ago, or was 40 years ago, I, I don't remember getting a gift for you. Let's say you won't forget all the other birthdays. And these people made noise about 40, I think. They made a lot of noise. I didn't get any gift from you now. So all of a sudden, I become your mentor. I, I mean, how does that add up? You know, um, you call a mentor and the mentor says, okay, um, don't go this direction. And then you explain to me why you need to go in that direction. I'm not your mentor. You know, it's, we, we just have it mixed up. I've had people talk, for example, let me use Bruce Eddie for, as, as an example. I know people who Eddie taught down. And who didn't wait for freedom? Who did not wait to let the team finish? And when
when they talk to you, they talk to you from from an angle of optimum, utmost knowledge. And you're looking at them thinking, how foolish you are. Because you can hear foolishness coming out of their mouth. Even when they're talking sound, you can you can hear foolishness. You know. Some of them will talk to you not knowing that you have a whole stack of line arrays and pro threes and pro nines in your store somewhere. And they'll be talking to you like you know nothing, you know, like maybe you have a small brain gap mixer somewhere. And then you mention some names and like, yeah, yeah, I know him. It's as bad as, you know, a gospel music minister goes to a church. And and I'm telling you, this is African magic, a real life story. Goes to a church and they ask the person, do you know this one so in the bad home? It wasn't me. Mentioned, they mentioned a big woman's name, a big woman that all of us know. How can you be bad? You don't know Bolari, you don't know Toshweton, you don't know Mafalo. It's not possible now. So do you know some person? Said, no, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't actually. You know, and, and, and you know, down the line, the story is you practically grew in this person's hand. You know? So it's not. It's not a case of not understanding what mentorship or mentee is. No, most of them, they know what they're looking for. They're not looking for mentors. They're looking for platforms. You know, how many of them can suffer with you to say that, that you're a mentor? You know, people get on the plane. When do they get on the plane? They'll send me a text from the plane. Oh, we're coming to Nigeria. Big deal. Cause of, and I'm like, hello. It's easy to hook you up, but you can get more than hooking up with that. People will think of, okay, hi, what's up, how are you doing? How was Charlie Dot concert? How did it go? One still did it yesterday, I'm talking of yesterday. A big name, big person, come from London. He's expecting, he's expecting me to line up churches for him to sing. I'm waiting for him to land now so I can talk, talk sense into his head. Yeah, because time is great. We're no longer as young as we used to be. So there's some things we can't hide anymore. You just say the way it is. Mm. So the Sorry, question I'm, I was no 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 I I love the angle that you brought it from and it's amazing that you just spoke my mind. A lot of people just want to be attached. Oh I know Big B. Oh I know Frank Edwards. I know this, but they don't want to understand the process. So they want to talk like them, charge like them. Um talk about them like they are these guys that we roll around with but they don't understand where you stare from so they'll be like ah some will even come and message and say oh so i saw that this person was your guest a couple of days ago can you hook me up with this person and i'm like oh do you know how long i build that relationship with that person like people don't even understand relationships and they just want to. <laughs> so yes, we, we want platform. We want the blowing syndrome. And, and, and a typical example I will use, Baba Timiche. Baba Timiche has done a lot of backup, a lot of carry bags for so many years that now that it's blowing up in Ibadan, you see people that have not even done a quarter of the work he did in the background and they want to be on the, to the limelight and i'm like the foolish thing for me and, and i say this with with all with all the decorum i can find the foolish thing for me is they still won't go and ask him how did you get to this point mm -mm. i mean this guy has a concert in a bad dog that a couple of weeks before they had a concert in that same hall nobody showed up has the concert in that same hall is packed full i rushed back from jerusalem to make that concert my capital ran, ran back from london to make that concert i'm not sure none of his generation none went to sit him down for a while tell us people in sakwa that's only concerted and what it is it's just diligence to service but she has gone to sing for me in like three places this year. I know I didn't give him one naira on the room. I can say this online, not one naira. I plan to give him more, but the money did not show. So I just told him, tell your boys so, you know. Now, 
they invited me. I couldn't show up, and I know that. So me say, let's just go to my. You forget that you invited me. That none of these guys want ask him. Okay, how do you get to the point where the so me show coach you? How do you go? How how do you how did he build a team where he can say, my bad, they don't give us anything, you know, and they're fine with it. How did he get to the point of packing a whole pool in Ibadan? Nobody will sit down and ask him. I can count how many people this year have asked me adequately intelligent questions about ministry. Very few of them, you know. Some ask Nathaniel very foolish questions, and I'm, you know, sometimes we joke about it like, not for real. This guy actually this one. This is crazy. You know, so is it is this a time of the day that you blow your trumpet that the anointing will flow? I, ah, so so Shireni, what what kind of ah? You know, can you imagine someone asking me how do you summon the Holy Spirit? How, what do you mean summon the Holy Spirit? Is it Jajaura? There's no summoning the Holy Spirit now. That's why you know it's the constant fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Even when you this way, when you go go go, when you have you have you know allow sin into your life, you have gone wayward, it is the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit that would allow you to go beyond that point, that would allow you to cross that line again, align you back. It's not the conjuring of the Holy Spirit. So this guy says, when you are leading worship, how do you control, how do you make the Holy Spirit appear? Appear where now? <laughs> but anyway, that is it. <laughs> I am, I am in love. Like, I can't even hold it. So, you grew up in Ibadan, and I know how much you love Ibadan. Now, as much as Lagos is very big, why didn't you just opt and say, I want to stay in Lagos? Like, Lagos pays more, you get more connects and all that. Um, the, the honest truth is, at one point, I tried to move to Lagos because I'm always in Lagos. I mean, we're having this this chat now, and we spoke yesterday from Ibadan, right? I'm talking to you now from Ikeja, you know, and from Ikeja, I'm coming to New York. So everything is, is in Lagos, but but the, the truth of the matter is, I tried to move to Lagos, and then everything just sees everything, everything sees. When I say everything sees, I mean everything sees. I didn't get any invites. I didn't get. You know, I was wondering what's going on, you know. And then after like a month or two, you know, and speaking to some of my spiritual fathers and people I talked to, them, like, you know, I, the Holy Spirit is not telling us to tell you anything. He said you should come and talk to him, so go and talk to him. You know, and that for me was a bit comical, like, Holy Spirit said I should talk to him. I talked to him like, ah, uh, this or tell tell any. You know, it became one of those, ah, kill Holy Spirit now. Ah, Charles or tell tell any, you know. And then I got into that, you know, that mode of, you know, alone with God, you know, what's happening. And the simple question was, where did I ask you to go? You see, where did I ask you to go? That answered all my questions. I just, that week was when I, I canceled anything, house anything, anything. Entered the pardon. Immediately my heart made that change. And immediately, I'm talking of some two, three hours later. Avalanche of invites. I mean, avalanche. Now, even yesterday, yesterday, Lalu was Lalu was taunting me and pulling my leg. So, won't I bring Tony Top to Lagos? Come and do Tony Top in the hotels. You know, next cafe was saying, no, let's do Tony Top in the hotels. And I'm smiling because the instructions I receive is very, very different. You know, my perfect example is always Reverend Bionne Fatua I mean, I, I just love him with all my, I mean, Pastor Bionu is just, you know, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm like this when I say Pastor Bionu, but, you know. Now, when Pastor B was moving to Abuja, everybody thought he had lost his senses. Everybody. Because everything was saying Lagos. And Reverend B put a pastor in Lagos and comes to Abuja on known territory, doesn't know anybody, came with zero. But he knew what God had told him. Now, years later, the same people that thought he was crazy have to queue up to see him. And no sense of pride, you will see them 
But if they are if they are aligned to the mission, then they probably won't be cured. Do you get? You know, and those little little lessons, my generation, we don't pick them. We don't pick them. We don't we don't pick how people you know succeed from one point to another. We don't pick positioning. We don't pick you know how does the Holy Holy Spirit want me to want want me to move? You know. What's my geo geo contact? What's my code? What's my own access point? We don't. So for me, Ibadan is where God has asked me to stay for now, and from Ibadan, if you say please move to Lagos, I'll move. He says come to Lagos, Lagos. But for right now, I don't have any leading in my heart to move out of the country or move within the country. People even say to me, why don't you relocate your family? Why am I relocating family when? Mm. It's not, you get it. Would it, is it like they will have a better life if they look it and then I'll be, you know? Okay, then let me go to that. Hmm. So, I I knew Big B from Wednesday prayer meeting and the, fr- the Sunday morning turn it up, the radio show. So how did you transcend from music, broadcasting, media, that globe? How did it come up? Like I said, everything about me was just media and entertainment. And then at some point, I started having, I think it was being and I, the first I, the first I had this conversation that, you know, don't assume that everybody goes to church on Sunday morning. It's a wrong assumption. You know, I know Benga has all these very crazy you know, far out ideas and concepts. So I thought, yeah, why don't we do something on Sunday mornings? That, that, you know, people are by the swimming pool or playing tennis or something, and they can still relate to, you know, and that's how Turn It Up came to be. But, you know, God has a way of, you know, putting his own things together. I wanted Turn It Up to start on OSRC when they created Ocean State. The year Osho State was created, you know, I started the FM and I put in my stuff like, yeah, I'll start a radio program then. It wasn't called Turn It Up, you know. I think it was it was called um, Sunday Morning Tonic or something silly like that. But somehow, that didn't fly. And for years, it was just there, dormant. And then I came to the minister at Jesus House London, met this wonderful lady, um... Now, Mr. Shimolo was Bishi, BC Akonde, the daughter of the owner of Plastic and 105. She was a member of the choir, you know. And then eventually she came back home to look after the radio station. And I, like, you, you know, you should do something on Sunday mornings. I go, really? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Talk about that. And bam. Turn it up was born eight years ago. So there was no heavy spiritual happening that brought Turn it up, you know. It was just time and chance. So, give us the influence from Mewa Olari Wajin. Ah, my father. Hey, my father. Hmm. The influence. Everything. Everything. Funny enough, funny enough, the, the times that I should have learned mannerism and you know ministry ethics and all that from him because he was already doing music when i was smoking it he was already doing music yes um was when i was asked to go back to london because i was well behaved you know i was behaving too well for them in london so they wanted me to go and behave in nigeria you know um so but somehow growing up Mannerism, even some of my stage ethics, some, you know, practically percent of what I do on stage, you think is Muiwa. And I didn't see him do it. It's just something that he imbibed. But over the years, you know, lessons I've learned, examples of ministry, examples of simplicity in ministry, example of simplicity in power. Do you know, tomorrow, most people don't know that Mewa is the station director for Premier Internet Radio. 
most people don't know, they think he's a presenter. Premier, he's a radio. And he doesn't throw it in your face. Even though that's okay, pata, pata, man. You know? And some of the things he does, some of the places he goes, the, the places that you dream of, man, you know? That you dream of. As River Songs, as Muiwa. And you never see him throw it around. You won't see, you won't see one long distance story of, of him singing in, uh, in Birmingham Palace or things like that, you know. So I've learned that. And then I've learned consistency in delivery. Consistency in delivery. You can't. You can't. You can't give. You can't give me a ministry, ministry opening. And and God, God won't do something. You know, something will drop. I've seen that over the years. It's one of the things I I learned and I covered and I'm trying to to grow in. You know, you know when I see people like my organa Andrew Bello, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to be like Andrew Bello now. Like, let me have some songs that can rap to and deliver the Holy Ghost. But <laughs> no, but at the serious no. I mean, where you are. I learned I learned a, a lot. Practically all I know from where you are. Um, discipline I learned from Evangelist Tone Show et um, Ministry, ministry, ethics, stage mannerism, um, the art and act of praise and worship I learned from Pana Paul. You know, and that was a painful experience. Hey, Pana, Pana, if there's anybody online now, Pana, you're, you're a very hard dog. Yes, I can say that. Evangelist Tone Show et Ah. As one strong mother, a very strong, very strict. <laughs> yeah, but she don't come down now, you know. But even now, as she's divided, she still, but she don't come down, you know. So having having people like that in the foundation helped me, you know. The days of singing for the Amazons, you know, Melody and um, Pastor Amazon, Pastor Pastor Amazon, and Pastor Man Amazon for praise cleaning. Those days, those. Early days of singing in full gospel, Oshobo, I'm talking of, you know, 99, you know, 99. Those days were, were learning days, you know. And then you see some of, some of my young cats now who, who just came around the, con- the corner and you ask them the same question you asked me now, you know, what has kept you focused on this? What is your ideal? You know, who do you look up to in ministry? Who they mention that you that you see an album that is sending sending fans, or you see anybody who tell you is wrong, cannot or something, you know? But but would you say that the growth in the new generation artists, when you compare it to them, do you think that the growth level has increased? Or you'd say that it has reduced. Um, do you mean growth or you mean depth? Hey, you're both. Bukola, it's a stop you. Unstoppable genesis. Um, you mean depth or growth? Well, I will use both because growth in the sense of if you look at Mama Balare or Tone Shreta or Panam Paul and the likes, if you look at them, you would see the amount of um. Oh, okay. I think it's off again. So for those j- listening to us, yes, there's a very, very bad echo um, because the network from me is hand. It's, it is it is very wonderful, but like we're, we'll try to manage and salvage it till the last this one hour. Then we'll see how we're going to bring him up again. So probably he's going to use like a, 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 a hairpiece device or something. But... Um, <clears throat> God bless you too, sir. God bless you too, sir. Um, let me have him back on the live. Thank you very much. Because if you look at the growth pattern of how you see Panam possible, their courage, from their depth as music writers, as um, as mature Christians, and their depth and um, what they call it in God, it's kind of different between then and now. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that's how I feel. I feel like 
uh okay i don't know why we can't we can't have him back on but we'll have we'll have big b back online but when we talk about the i want to blow syndrome yes lovely said it a lot of people don't want to be me mentored you want that um you want to be on the limelight at the same time you want to you don't want to follow the process that your so-called boss has been following do you understand like he has worked with this person that person gone through this road gone through that road but you don't want to follow that process because you feel like it can just hand everything over to you it's not possible you have to start from somewhere build those relationships let me tell you the funny thing is that i have seen a lot of young chaps that are my age mates that are, happy birthday tony ajayi god bless you my darling a lot of people that i know that are close friends that want to like oh they want to like have this person as their mentor and all that but don't want to have that relationship like you said you don't want to you you want to be on the same stage you owe nathaniel but say it is super possible but have you even gone through going through your rehearsals going through studying the word having that time of fellowship with the holy spirit no you don't want to do that um i don't know what's going on but i'm going to add a big b I'm trying to add him up again, but yeah. Okay. It's saying unable to join. Okay, so the network is very, very wonderful. I think after the first hour, once we go off, we're going to have Big B back. Um, I, I don't know if Big B has um, like an hairpiece or like, apart from the... And if we can try out the AirPods again so that we can also um, not have the feedback. But as I was saying, it is very, very important as people of God, as Christians, as gospel artists, as entrepreneurs, understand the process. And we're still going to talk about the business side of, of um, Big B. We're going to talk about the business side of him where he has enjoyed and followed that process to understand that, oh, you start from here, you do this, you seek help. Now, nobody is um what they call it nobody achieves anything on their own i was listening to, i was watching a video of donald trump and he said his father just borrowed him a, a little change of two hundred fifty thousand dollars or is it a million dollars or something and i was laughing my friend and i'm like oh my god see this guy is saying that small money for this 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 amount but unfortunately that is his own truth for him it was small compared to the bigger picture and like big b said following the process means going back to god where does god want you to be at that particular time when i was in nigeria i knew that i could sing i knew that i could like i had gone to a couple of churches to sing i'd known that but i understood the bigger picture of what god has called me to do now what has god called you to do what is your identity yeah, there's a video that I posted on my page and it's like, what's your identity? What of if you've always done that? Yes, so Akinshallah, if you've always done that, then there's a process. Time and chance happens to them all. But you know that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So you know when you give someone bread to eat, it's direct. When God gives seed to the sower, the farmer, it takes time to blow them. So the question is, if you have a mentor or you have someone that you've been looking up to now, I have a lot of them, including Big B. And for me, it's not the day that I want to have big b on the show that i would say oh that's when i'll start talking to big b no i see him on live i see him do funny stuff i see him do this i see him on his live i come up okay i press i i feel i am not physically in ibado and when i was physically in ibado i used to go for turn it up that's my own little quota that i could give to the team i was not in his big team that oh this person is his band member this is this but i've been following his work for years Ministry is beyond um I'm going to a church. Yes, yes, ministry is going is beyond going to you're very correct. You're very correct. And that's what I'm saying. You have to look at the picture God has given you. Where is he calling you to? You know that you can be in ministry and not go from church to church to minister. You can be in ministry, be in your own church. And that's one thing when we had Big B back, I will love him to talk about. And what is that? Having a home church, having a place of service. Now we have a lot of people that jump from one church to the other just because I remember when um Frank Edwards had this blowout, um Sinatra, this blowout, uh, Dan, all of them had this blowout. A lot of people were storming into Christ Embassy why because they wanted to blow out like them but is that what god really wants for you not everybody will be an artist not everybody will be a pastor you can be in ministry and you're 
doing so well, serving God in your home church, and God is doing mighty miracles through you. So, being ministry is not, oh, my name is on the billboard, or it is that assignment God has given you, and you taking your step by step. Yes, God bless you, Bukola Ita. You must know what you're called for. Why has God given you that assignment? Welcome back, sir. Yes. Oh much. my God, I'm super happy. Oh, oh my God, oh my God. The hairpiece is super perfect. I'm actually hearing you without you putting Thank the you, the hair the the mouthpiece up. So it's perfect. I'm super happy. Thank you, sir. So I was I I I know that we're gonna go like one hour the one hour Instagram thing. We might go off, but I want to talk okay. about having a home church. I know we're going to go back to um, you continue talking about the influence of um, Minister, your big brother, Minister Mwewal Arawadju. But I want you to talk about having a base, having a home base. Now, um, Olubukala said one thing. She said, um, having a ministry is not going from one church to the other. And I said, it's not everybody that God has called to be artists. It's not everybody that God has called to be pastor. You can be a doctor. I have an amazing mentor in um, Dr. Bumi, um, Bumi Lola Akipelu. She's based in Saskatoon. And from the day I met that woman, I understood she knew her purpose. She knew why God had called her. So when she said, oh, I want you to work with me, I was like, hands up. Like, there's nothing like artists, there's nothing like this. She's super humble and she's a medical doctor. But she understood that through my field, I will allow God to use me in this ministry. So before I even go to that angle, <laughs> having a home church, how important is it? Because people jump from church to church having to think that, oh, I'm going to blow through Christ embassy or redeem or whatnot. Um, the, the, the first thing is, you know, what what is what is your foundation beyond the home church? Your pastor is your covering, hmm. you know. So it's just it's just not about the church itself, but who is your covering? Hmm. Who can I call to say, so so and so so? For example, you tell me, can you have Femi Okunuga? Immediately, I know two people I will call. Immediately, I know, call Pastor, call Nathaniel Bassi. What's the scenario? Call Kule Ajayi. What's the scenario? Call it Femi. You know, immediately you have, you have a circle of spiritual leaders that you can call. Now, beyond that, it's also how do you feed? Hmm. Now, how do, you, how do you feed your spiritual being? Yes, you don't have to be in a church to feed your spiritual mind but remember it does say it's not hebrews 10 25 not forsaking the assembly of one another but yeah. exhorting one another in, in this most holy word hmm. you have forgotten that is in the exhortation of that word that won't allow you to be discouraged when they give you bad honorarium it's the exhortation of that word that won't allow you to be depressed when you don't have bill money to make the bills at home hmm. it is that exhortation that would align your mind to know who pays my bills hmm. when I go to minister. Hmm. Is it, am I getting my honorarium from where I'm going to minister or somebody else is going to pay from somewhere else? Hmm. It is the exaltation of the word. Okay, it big is the building up of the word. Good. I want to stop there. We're, we have the one hour mark for Instagram so I'll add you up um, in like 10, 30 seconds. Hey, Fever. Yes, so we're gonna have Big B back on the live. It's more than it's more than um, just being in a church. It's more than being in the choir. It's about your own relationship with God. How? What happens after you leave the church? What happens when you you go home? What happens when nobody's watching you? What happens? How do you even sp feed your spiritual self, your 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 spiritual uh, body? How do you feed your mind? How does that work? Because a lot of people feel, oh, I don't I don't need anybody. I'm good all by myself. I am this. I am that. But the question is this: How do you feed your spiritual being? 
what's in your core let's leave what your pastor is gonna do let's leave what your this is going to do when you thank you how are you doing oh my god let me tell you this was one of the the amazing people in my life you know he said another thing about having spiritual leaders around you not just pastors but people that are mature spiritually hi akeshala put that mature spiritually that you can also say oh, okay i prayed but i need like a confirmation or i want you to pray along with me i you should have them around your life you should have some sort of covering that you can use you know a lot of people just want you to you, you just want to go to church your pastor should know you you should sing it's more than that so what happens when you climb that stage what happens what happens when you what happens when you um how will i put it is everybody seeing me i can't even see see stuff um okay perfect so what happens when you leave the church what happens when you you wake up the next morning and you're like okay what is god telling me for today understanding the process means understanding what god has called you to do understanding the process means understanding your purpose so what is your purpose what is your identity what should people say oh when they wake up like oh i want to listen to dom when why because i want to have this flow of soothing worship and flow of this if you oh, say oh i want to have something on hymns oh let me just get get dear color oh i want to have some high praise in here let me get some influx yes it's it's coming back on it's coming back on we're just waiting for him to come back online so what do you do what what exactly are you going to do it when when all those things come up so i want to have some praise jam and and we talk about um what they call it we talk about big b or, or you want to talk about bukola bekes if you understand what i'm saying so people a lot of people don't understand the process and i'm sorry they don't want to understand the process because they want everything on a platter of gold so everything should just come to that they don't want to work for it they don't want to understand the process for it they don't want to have mentors they don't want to have they don't want to be disciplined so if your mentor says you know what i need to read three books i remember oh my god god bless my one of my mentors one of, one of the greatest producers and producing minds that i have in nigeria and and one one of them is um no audio i can really can everybody hear me okay so i'll try and go out back and come back i think instagram is having some issues um yeah but okay so let's let's do this okay so what we're talking about mentoring so your mentor is telling you Oh, you should um, do this. You should do that. You should find this doing. Oh, read this book. So, um, Barry Adetishola of Clean Mix Studio in Ibadan. So, one of the things when I told him that I wanted to learn production and learn this and learn that, and I wanted him to to be my mentor in that in that field. If you can hear me, please just press the love button or thumbs up or something. Just send the love button or thumbs up or, or whatnot if you can hear me clearly on Instagram. Or just say yes or something i just want to be very sure so for for me when i went to meet him i needed to know the rudiments of okay this is um what i i i needed to have or do for sound and and for production and what will happen thank you very much and what will happen he gave me books to read now we were two in that studio and the other person was like oh, I can't read anything i can't no i can't even deal with this i can't read anything and for me it was more than um how would i put it it was more than just coming to learn it was understanding where i was coming from it was understanding what i was trying to learn so when your mentor or the person that you're looking up to or you're trying to even get the even if you're trying to get platform from the person so i'm, I'm trying to get food from you and the question is when have i taken my time to say okay um do you have gary at home oh yes we have big be back on the live yippee so when have I said, oh, okay, um, Big B, is there anything you need me to help you with? Is there something that you want me to help you get along? <laughs> Welcome, sir. Thank you. Oh, this is much better. I'm 
reason. Yes, I okay. told you. It was that hairpiece. It makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> but it made it better than... And it was not networked. Because I know Nigerian network is good. Like... We have yeah, some good network. Hallelujah. Yes, we have some good network. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I was... You were talking about not just attending a church or saying that oh i am with this pastor but having that growth as being a christian and being yes, a Berean I mean, christian in itself let, let me let me share an example with you let okay. me share an experience with you um many years ago um i was invited i was in a lorry i was still in lorry i was still a student there and i was invited for from a lorry to come a minister at holy ghost congress i think it was at the second one or the third the third one you know and here is me young guy you know yeah, that you have seen, and then Professor Abuaba had been like, We have to have you at the Holy Ghost Congress. Letter in hand, feeling very high, coming to Holy Ghost Congress. And I come into contact with Kunle Ajay, Pastor Kunle Ajay. And, you know, and he is a man of the spirit. And, you know, there's a time I'm supposed to minister, is on the letter, everything. He just looked at me and smiled. Okay, I, 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 okay. Am I, am I minister? Am I, am I worried? Am I minister? So after a long wait, I think I came up around we had three a.m. or something for eight minutes. Eight minutes. This was someone that was supposed to minister praise worship for one hour and all that, and I was boiling. Oh my goodness, I was angry. Girl, I was upset. And after Pastor Holly came to me and said, you're an amazing music, music minister, but, you know, leave the noisemakers and get into the real thing. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm so upset. Mm. After that time, he came to learn to minister at the Holy Ghost night. And I was in charge of music. Um, and I know for, for the lack of no other way to, to describe it, I practically saw music lifting men, I mean literally lifting men from the floor hmm. and being slain in the spirit. I'm talking of people like, for no reason, you just hear sound, va, 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 de, va, va, va. and you see someone just go, brrr, bah. and I'm looking at him thinking, ah, What's happening? You know. And after, you know, I went to get him, blah, blah, clinical, clinical. All that time, he didn't know I was angry. He didn't know there was nothing doing. He had said his own and moved on. You know. Ah, I like that. Go near Paleo. Say, okay, clinical, clinical. And my wife will leave the noise, get the real thing. You know, you're a wonderful music minister. You know, enjoy the. He said it, you know, just in passing, and that was it. I know seven years later, I understood what the man went, hmm. what he meant. Seven, I'm saying seven years later, hmm. it took me to understand what, what he meant. Now, I could have, I could have thrown a tantrum. I could have decided to, to turn away from what he said, even in my anger. But something in me just wanted to know what that meant. Hmm. It took me seven years. Now, why did it take me seven years? I didn't allow myself to be nurtured hmm. by by that word early enough. Hmm. If I just submitted myself to teachings and, you know, lessons from him, I'd have gotten it quicker. So it's not just about a church building. It's not about you having a mentor. It's not about you knowing the Bible or reading the Bible back cover to cover. Which I think is pointless, by the way. Reading the Bible cover to cover. If you don't have any revelation, it's pointless. What are you reading cover to cover now? I mean, you know, it is about the covering you have. Who, who can I say is your instructor? Who can I say hmm. has, um, like they will say in the Yoruba language, one of the languages you speak in Nigeria, you know, talo legbe lowo. Hmm. Who has your cane in their hand? Who can I call to correct you? Hmm. As as mighty and as well known and as well spread as Nathaniel Bassi is, I know one person I can call. Hmm. 
if there's an issue. As strong and as mighty as Eben, as Frank Edwards, you know, all my people as they are, I know one person I can call. I know it's not, it's not even Pastor Chris or Yakilome, hmm. that I can call immediately. And you know what? This and this happened. I feel we need, you know, and hmm. they would have a conversation with them that they can listen to. Hmm. If those people on that level have that, Joe Priest said something, you know, he, he said it jokingly, but, you know, he said, if you don't have a spiritual covering, you are likely to fall under any terrorist attack. Hmm. And it doesn't have to be a spiritual attack. It could be as simple as somebody, somebody slaps you in church. And because you don't have anybody that would, that would ask you any question, you need to turn into a fight and to fighting in the church. And you don't see anything wrong with it. Gospel music minister. Can that happen? Yes, it has happened. Hmm. It still happened to one this year, this year, this year. If I mention the guy's name, everybody on this thing would laugh. Hmm. They gave him honorarium. And they said the way the guy gave him the honorarium is very disrespectful. And I was like, disrespectful, like how? Hmm. They put money in the envelope. I hand it to you. What do you want me to do? You want me to prostrate for that? The guy, you slapped me. You give the same for us, I pay, you slap me. Ah, your head is not correct to run gospel music in the sun. Wow. Would, would that happen if they had the word growing in them? Would that happen mm. if you had the fear of authority on your head? I doubt it. Mm. As mm. huge as um, Minister Samuel Poso is, who is the father to many of us, we know one person we can call. Mm. One person. That we can report to if mm. you're obsessed with him. So, who are you that you don't have any covering? You don't have... We mention your name. We can't say this is the church you are going to. Hmm. You know? Sometimes people see me wear, you know, branded redeemed tops. And I'm like, oh, huh? you're so proud of this, your redeemed Christian church of God. And I'm like, are you guys okay? What do you mean I'm proud of redeemed Christian church of God? You're not dead minister. <laughs> even, even, even leave a dead minister. <laughs> I found comfort, I found a home, I found people who, who take You found family am. within the church. I found family within the church. So what are you saying? Is it you think you think is because oh I don't get okay, you get it later. So mm. that for me is it is of utmost importance. Mm. And I tell you what, it would it would amaze you that ninety percent of the guys you call gospel music minister now mm -hmm. ask them their church, ask them their pastor. Hmm. They say, well, I'm never really around, so I don't really have... It's not about you being around. Hmm. I know I know how many times I've been in my so-called parish this year. I don't think it's up to four times. But as a pastor, where I am, he will tell you. Hmm. Accountability. You know, as, as crazy as it is, ask him. He will say, oh, I, I think Black is on his way to New York or something. I think so. I mean... By the time you ask two or three people around, you say, hey, no, 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 no. That's how it should be. Hmm. That's how it should be. You're not worshipping any man. You're not subjecting yourself to any man, but you're just simply saying, you know, this is where my knowledge is, you know. Okay, so Tom, we're uh, saying that for a second, I assume my dear Minister eh, Bibi doesn't eh, go to church. Stop really. <laughs> <Minister Billy. laughs> <laughs> he said that he didn't go to church on Sunday service. It's always a splash on Sunday for Tony Top. <laughs> ah, for me, we're going to forgive you. For me, Tony Top was like my my. You know, okay. So let me let me confess this thing. So when I first got to Canada, and I was still say to you now. So before I go to bed, because it's seven hours difference, like it is still it's past it's twelve thirty, Alberta time now. So what I used to do was by the time it was like eleven. Um, 11 p.m. or like 12 midnight here during winter i will i watch koza i watch um i watch koza i watch tph i will enjoy praise and worship thanksgiving i watch the i will enjoy the service and i'll go to sleep then i'll go to my own church in the morning so that was how turning off was for me like i'll be like mm, why are they going to sing in that church? well let me hear latest new song jerry i'll go for another service or something that was how turning <laughs> So let me cook my And the funny thing is, most people, most people don't know that, you know, half of the time I recorded the program, but it's recorded real time.
why. Oh. So you listen to me like I'm there because I record it real time. I record, I don't record and edit. I record real time two hours. I record, you know, so the expression, everything is there. Now I know I can do it with, with gadgets. I can record 15 minutes and they spread it over, over two hours. It's fine. So that confuses people a little. You know, oh. so and then you know to answer for example, I mean, like tell me what I would say now. You know, there are, there are three four services in a Sunday now, so, so you can to, always you yeah. I now. I always yeah. did like second service somewhere else, and so. It's and, you know, and I'm not saying that after every turn it up, I head to church. I'm not saying that most of the time after turn it up, I'm heading to my administration. I just try to catch up at uh, twelve thirty in Lagos or catch up, but you know, there's that, but. Aside from that, you know, anytime you can make it, man, make it. Okay, and, and Big B, when you were off, um, someone asked a question, Akishala asked a question, and he said, um, w when we're talking about the old mentorship, and you were talking about you should try to, like, attach yourself, like, be there, do, like, help out, do stuff, like, be consistent in the person's life, and you two grow as a person. So he said, what if you try all those things, and there's still nothing from the person? What happens? Because you were expecting something for the person. Mm. You were expecting something for the person. You were expecting something in exchange of what you were doing. Mm. That's where your heart was. Your mm. heart was not on learning or drawing virtue or being impacted by the person. Your heart, your heart was on, I'm serving this person. You should be able to link me up to this. That's mm. why you don't have anything. Mm. And you will never get anything. Mm. Never. If you have that kind of never. mentality. Never. Because your heart will draw, your your heart, your heart connects to your spirit. What your heart is saying is what your spirit will draw. Hmm. If your heart is not connected to what your spirit ought to draw, your hmm. spirit will not draw it. It's that hmm. simple. Hmm. You know. Hmm. If you sow a seed, for example, you know, you sow a seed of a hundred naira to me. Now, but in your heart, you're saying, I'm giving you this hundred naira. So that the day next time you need one thousand. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Next no, time you will give me la, uh, uh -huh. tickets, free tickets. It, it won't, it won't, it won't work. Mm. work. <laughs> work. So, work. so let's go to the business side of Big B. I, I know you have, uh, what they call it, a, um, a business and. Would we say like one thing that I remember when Laulu Benjo was talking about his story is his story is very very unique, <laughs> very very unique. And when he came on the show, he said he always enjoyed every minister or anybody doing full time music to have a business that they are doing, so that if even if something happens, that probably robots will start singing for everybody. <laughs> There's something bringing food to the table so my question is when how did the business side of um big b start and when for an entrepreneur so we've talked about starting up and and following the process for a music minister so when it comes to an entrepreneur that wants to start from the scratch what will be your your tips for that person number one will be know what you've been asked to do mm. or know what you want to do build that into a brand Hmm. For example, you know that your heart has a new way of serving Gary. There's this amazing guy now. I won't mention his name. He's all over Instagram. I totally love him. He serves Gary at, you know... Um, no, he's our people. He's our people. Corporate Gary. He's our people. Corporate Gary? Yes. Ah, Mulove <laughs> Danu. Now, the first time he will do that, everybody will do that. Gary, Pasi. Yimu like Yimu like Yimu. Do you know how many trucks the guy has now? Hmm. Now, but he didn't get there by serving Gary in one party and saying, ah, they didn't like my Gary, so I'm not doing it again. Hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you one error that gospel musicians make. And I've seen this error in so many lives. It's a lesson I learned from Pastor Wadi Adinuga. A lesson I learned from my brother. A lesson I learned from Pan and Percy Paul. A lesson I learned from uh, Chris Delvan Guamna. Hmm. You must build what you have. Hmm. Your brand as a gospel music minister. You must build it to a point where it's trusted hmm. to handle anything. Hmm. What do I mean? If I mention Lao Lu Joe, I must be comfortable.
comfortable enough to say, ah, I'm uncomfortable. I need, I need um, a plot of land in Lekki. Who do I trust for good advice? Ah, that Laulu guy, he's a trusted, you know, you must, you must, your brand must be like that. Do you know Pastor Wiley buys generator? He buys caterpillar for people. Hmm. Pastor Wiley, I didn't look at. And he's a gospel music minister. Hmm. Why would he get those kind of opportunities? Because he's built people to trust the brand, to trust hmm. that there is honesty in this brand. Hmm. Now, as an entrepreneur, as someone who is making hair, as someone who is, you know, you're a makeup artist, hmm. can I trust you enough that when you say, okay, I'm going to go to that bridal train, I'll fix up their makeup, this is what I'm going to do for this, this, I'll put a dash of MAC on this one, that person I'm going to use Mary Kay, that person I'm going to use Mayweather, that person I'm going to use Elizabeth Arden, you know, can I trust you enough to say that those products are what you're going to use when you get there? Mm. Mm. As si- now, as simple as that is, messes up people. True. I call you as a makeup artist. You tell me I'm bringing you foundation of Elizabeth Harden, but Elizabeth Harden is a bit expensive. So you go the rule number number me and you buy atmosphere powder. <laughs> now you probably won't be noticed because you're good, but by the time the sweat and the party is kicking and all that. Somebody somewhere will know that this foundation is not Mac. This foundation is not Elizabeth. That ah, but I don't know for you. I get here. Do you get? You say to someone, "I'll make you a wig." Don't worry. The wig will last you for two weeks, for four weeks. You carry it. Nothing will happen. And then you buy the inferior kind of, you know, um, weave on to do the wig. Your threads are messed up. You know, you just put it together. It looks nice in the beginning. Until the person uses it for like three days, you know, maybe goes and to the party where they do dancing. And they can't come again. And then you now say, ah, people are not even patronizing me. You know, it's not about patronizing, but there's there's something wrong with your consistency. Mm, integrity, yes. Integrity. There's something wrong with the words you say. They fall to the ground. That's why, for example, a gospel artist will say, I don't charge money. I don't charge money. But if you can just, you know, maybe... In the range of three, four hundred, five hundred. So what have you done now? <laughs> if you are going to ask for money, ask for money. If you are not going to ask for money, don't ask for money. Don't, don't, don't be foolish. <laughs> you know, be. It, it, it's, it's just my generation where we're amazing. We're amazing. We're amazing. We're amazing people, mm. right? We're amazing people. We don't take simple instructions because it's too simple for us. Mm. Mm. As simple as um, we're going to be praying at 10 to 12, join me at 12.30 to pray. You see some people who are strolling at 12, 12.45. I give you a reason why they're strolling in at 12.45. Hmm. And you wonder, was that an emergency? Hmm. Did someone die? Hmm. But we fixed 12.30. If you're not getting to me at 12.30, at 12.25... I should be getting a text for you telling me why you're not getting to me at 12.30. Hmm. Or at 10 past 12, chef, you should be telling me that, oh, I'll be running late. Oh, bye bye. I've gone to meetings where I'm running late. And I tell them, you know, I'm running late. There's someone coming to you now that will start that program. I'll be there at such a time. And hmm. they'll be upset. They'll be kidding But there'll be some, someone to start that program. They won't be stranded. Hmm. Same thing goes for an entrepreneur. You want to serve Akara to some guests. Your car is running late. Your car is supposed to start at 8 a.m. Your car is running late. Immediately make an alternative arrangement. Hmm. Don't get there at 8 and now give them reasons why your car came late. Hmm. It's, I, I don't even think it's an African thing. I think it's just a lazy syndrome. Hmm. I think it's just a, a lacassetical thing where we assume they will understand your, let's just leave it. Hmm. It's the height of foolishness. To think that something I'm paying for, I'll understand why you're not serving me excellence in service. Hmm. The act of foolishness. Hmm. When I started with Nescafe, I'm a, till tomorrow, most people don't know I'm a brand ambassador for Nescafe. Oh, I was still going to go to all that. 
you know, what got, us, what got us to that point? You, you come to your question. But what got us to that? You know, someone said it's not possible for you to bring what you do to, you know, an open field and get people to enjoy it. And I asked the question, what do they want? Entertainment. What do they want to do? To be lifted. What do they want? Fun. What do they want to do? They want to dance. So if I can bring my music, make them dance, make them smile. And they drink their tea. hearts. And they drink coffee. They'll be fine. And we did the first one. Hey, yeah. Now, do you both say, you know what, now what are we going to do with this? <laughs> let's, go and bring, let's, let's go and bring a balloon. I think this one's having fixed. And we did that for three years, back to back. Hmm. You know. So if you're an entrepreneur, you want to start something, first know what you want to start. Hmm. Ask questions. Not just from people who have done it. People who have failed at it, go and ask them. Hmm. People who didn't get it right, go and ask them. Hmm. Then be sure that that's what you want to do and stick to it. If you're a poet and it seems like nobody understands why you want to be a poet, go and ask people who are poets and when they failed, how did they come back to being a poet? Hmm. Don't want to be a poet and you come and ask me, gospel music minister, how can I be lifted as a poet? Ah, I won't know now. Nah. Edgar Lovero, I'm going to Am I a poet? Am I a And then some of us make the mistake of going to sit with pastor. To ask, the, to ask the pastor who has a thousand and one things in his mind, how can I, my gift is dying. My, it will die. <laughs> it will, I mean, Good. be realistic in your, in your, get your, when you have your facts and you have your basics, then you can go to pastor and say, this and this is what I want to do. Hmm. And now, how do I, how can I position myself? How can I align this? Which hmm. one do I go to first? Guide me, you know? Hmm. Not go and ask pastor basic questions that you should have answered in your bedroom. Hmm. You're not going to ask, for example, you redeem. You're not going to ask the zona pastor that's taking of remittance. That <laughs> you are going to ask him, you know. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, hmm. so that's that's what I think. That's what I think. So, so, and I just want to talk about the brand because a lot of people will say, eh, people, uh, big brands don't support gospel. Big brands don't do this, uh, and I tell them it's a yeah. lie. I tell them it's a lie it's because a lie if you do the excellent work, they will support you. In South Africa, down there, I don't mean like literally down there. <laughs> in South Africa, just down there, the major sponsor for Joyous Celebration is MTN. And so people will say because it's South Africa, you know, there's no religious trouble there. But, so they can come out openly and say that they support, support, uh, any religious brand but, but we I but mean, we have they, brands in nigeria i'm just using that as, as like a big platform example but we have brands in nigeria uh, you, you're talking about nescafe being a brand a, ambassador of ne nescafe i know sammy oposo sammy oposo too was a brand ambassador for go at some point so go, we had yeah. big we had big brands supporting it's just you're telling me that tomorrow morning guinness book of record is saying they want to sponsor fearless for tim godfrey nobody will question because of the excellent work he has put into it so i believe that thank you i'm glad you mentioned that i'm glad you mentioned that now ask yourself all mm. the people who have said brands don't sponsor gospel or brands <laughs> are their works excellent do they bring out excellent what materials the brand to sponsor Mm. Hey, people, I'm going to leave you for two minutes. I want to talk to my wife. I'll be right back. Okay, so um, we're going to bring up Big, uh, big Biology. But that's, that, but that's the bitter truth, though. That's the bitter truth. We have a lot of people that will come. Okay. God bless you. It's not even just consistency. It's not even just consistency, but it is also that people don't give their best. So you come sing somewhere and you say, um, I'm going to charge, let's say 300,000 naira. No, you have to deliver because I'm going to bring, um, and I'm going to bring a mainstream artist the mainstream artist is going to deliver for me it's going to make sure that place is packed up it's going to make sure that and this is another thing it's going to make sure that he even promotes the the show with us like event is doing this and glow is doing this and they say oh okay so so and so live in concert the person is already making noise about the brand the brand's already making noise about the person but you see nowadays you want a brand to support you but you don't do anything that supports the brand 
So I okay, I want I want big turn it on big B to sponsor me. Oh, I want only and Tommy White to sponsor me in stuff that I do. Please, if you have any questions, you can send them. You can you can type them. Um, what they call you can type them out. Um, it's not everybody that does a hit, and it's not every song that has to be a hit song. I'm talking based off from gospel ministers. It's not all songs that have to be the hit song. But the question is, what's the impact of each song that comes out? There are so many. I, I've listened to a couple of alternative music from, from a lot of, um, um, of artists. And they have just one or two songs in their 18 track list. And it's just one or two songs that becomes that hit song for them. So you jump from one place to the other and you're singing flat, you're singing off, you're doing this, you're doing that, they're trying to talk to you, you are cursing at them, you're abusing them. One happened recently that I was so sad but I was not surprised about the person. It's not even just enough time for God but have you even, okay, like there are times where you want to take a song to sing, yeah, and you hear yourself and you're like, oh my God, what happened to me? Like, I, what, what happened to my voice? Oh my God. Because you haven't even, someone's asking, what's a hit song? So a hit song is that one song that, okay, like, Waymaker, that's a hit song. Waymaker is a hit song. Across the globe, across board, everybody can relate to it. Everybody can sing it. Everybody knows it. Like, I mean, everybody, everybody. So that is a hit song. Mm -hmm. But when a song is packed by, with the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, you don't even hit, need, you don't even need to call it a hit song. It's a power song, like Waymaker. Waymaker is a power song because there is no part of the world you sing that song that lives will not be changed. So what what is what is behind each song you write? And I ask myself, what is behind each song I write? What is behind each show I have? Do I want? Every week I come on radio, I want to come talk to everybody, I want to do this, but I want my experience from last week to be different from this week. There's a part, yes, God bless you, Sister Yetin, there's this spiritual part and there's a skillful part. There's a part where the Bible said, see a man diligent in his work. It was not see a Christian diligent in his work. It was not see, see a born again spirit filled. No, see a man. So if a man is diligent in his work, ordinary, he will stand before kings and not mean men. That is the, the basic principle of the Lord. The Bible already told us that. See a man diligent in his work, he will stand before kings and not mean men. Now, when you have the Holy Ghost factor, that makes it extra for you. And that is the truth. It is never easy to do anything good. It is never easy. Be I am telling you, it is never easy to be on radio, to do music, to, to be a lawyer, to do everything at the same time. It is never easy for anybody, but you're determined. You, you, want, to, you want to make sure that your integrity, because your integrity is even at stake. If tomorrow morning you say, oh, I want to. Yes, but impacting life is that what is behind it is it skillful enough is it excellent enough so you can have be having a hit song doesn't mean you are carnal you're welcome back sir thank you sorry i went to you went to have some lovey wife, dovey man. moment mm -hmm. no, lovey -dovey anything, or when, when we don't be spiritual but it's the same thing they're waiting for <laughs> So we're talking about the hit song thing and we're saying that um we're talking about excellence in ministry like brand supporting excellence and i and i was saying this that the bible that said see a man diligent in his work he didn't say see a christian or his holy ghost filled they're speaking in tongues brother see a man diligent in his work he will stand before kings and not mean men when you have the holy ghost factor it gives you that extra so that is why in in over 300 countries or over uh, how many countries that in across the globe you hear Waymaker, you are you are blown away because of the spirit backing the song and the excellence behind that song yeah so it, it's 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 so sad that the, the thing don't... for me is when you see some of some of my guys they tell you oh we want to some so brand mtn glow airtel and then i ask two questions oh we want less cafe to be on i say yeah cool they can be on it what are you giving them? What, what are you offering the brand? Hmm. Say, ah, we give them adverts. They'll be on, ah, you are squeezing your face. You don't, you don't even have the words. So, you know, we give them adverts. They'll be on all our 
publication, you know, their logo will be there, you know. And I let them finish and I say, okay, let me give you an example. For example, Nescafe. Nescafe in every geopolitical zone, or let me say for for sake of conversation, in every state has an average of about 600 or 700 billboards. Hmm. Has an average running on each radio station, an average per day of 15 adverts hmm. on each radio station. Adverts running each day, four or five. Hmm. So, bros, what would your, you putting them on your hand bill that you're producing 5,000 copies do to that brand? That is yes. one. Two, how many people do you want to gather? Hmm. That they will now say because you are gathering 300 people you are bringing something extra to the brand no that's the wrong that's the wrong pitch for any proposal very wrong pitch hmm. very very wrong pitch have a fresh idea that you want to for example you know off the top of my head you want mtn to come okay i can give you a thousand subscribers at my event hmm. i can assure you a thousand people will subscribe to mtn Hmm. use or a thousand people will get on music plus you hmm. know something something intelligent hmm. but no no if you read half of the proposals you realize that even you if you had money you won't give them <laughs> yes now because some of them will give you the proposal like it's like it's your vision it's like it's you that built the vision hello it's you that said go to go and do concerts now it's not so it's not my headache, that I, you know why is it not oh my headache that they give you money? Okay, let me give an example. <laughs> Recently, some you know, we had some some concerts, you know, and then oh, the network has gone again. No, I'm hearing you perfectly. Okay, so we had a concert, and this guy was upset that ah, how can you can you can you go eh? The church is not even supposed me. Click and I let him go on and 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 on. And when it was done, I said, Okay, when you release the CD, did the church tell you to go and record CD? Said no. Okay. Now because two or three people are clapping for you in the church, you think you're a celeb. You wanted to go and do concerts. Now you've done concerts, you take with it. You think I'm going to wait here for church, you don't give me one. Oh, Benny, who I know so much of church shit. You think I'm going to listen to all this your <laughs> gymnastics? Holy ghost. <laughs> so it is the mindset and the reasoning of most of the guys that puts mm. them in trouble. Mm. Mm. The reasoning that a brand owes you something. Mm. The reasoning that a church owes you something. Mm. The reasoning that your brother or your friend that has gone to America, she he knows I'm a ministry, he should be able mm. to get something to you. Ah, you are so, so wrong. You will mm. die in poverty. <laughs> you know so, no it's not that brands don't support brands are mm. selective about what they support true I know I know concerts that are fully powered by MTN in Nigeria mm. I know concerts that are fully powered by PZ mm. I'm, I mean fully gospel concerts full mm. gospel, full proper gospel mm. powered by PZ mm. Or P and G rather, not PZ. Forgive me. I know concerts that are powered by banks, gospel concerts. Sure. Sure. So it's about what you're bringing to the brand. It's mm. about. I mean, sometimes when we go to some of, you know, they have when they have end of year Thanksgiving for some of these multi multinational companies. Yeah. Okay, like last year, I went to Mobile, and then after doing praise worship, one woman looked at us and was like, ah, "Big Bisha." So, ori you know, now for her, mm. it was comical, but mm. I know in their mind she was thinking, why on earth is it that it's gospel that was brought to this? Mm. But check it. You know what had happened? Mm. They kidnapped a few people and the that one of the directors said, you know what, we, sh we should thank God. He just said it casually. They don't know we should thank God. We mm. found him, everything is okay. Mm. The African people that heard that were like, ah, but God said we should thank God, dude. let's thank God, dude. 
Who do we use to thank God? Bag, 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 bag. Selection, selection, bag, bag, bag. Selection, selection. Money follow my head. Money follow me. I go. <laughs> and you I, collect I, more big money. <laughs> I, you know, you, I, you know I was there, but uh, Frank was there. Mm. And the Adai was there. Mm. You know, and one of my brother from my brother from Abuja was there. Mm. You know, and we went to ourselves. We go and we go back home mm. to a smiling wife and children. And, and the wife will be smiling too. <laughs> Why would she smile? Malakai. Malakai. The joy of having Malakai. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Amazing. Amazing. So, so I, I think that, like, like I was saying yesterday, and she said one thing. She said, I, I, I feel like people just have this entitled spirit. Oh, I know it's coming That's from Canada, said, so feel, yeah, she's I, going to buy this. Yeah, she'll have it. this, That's, this. For example, the, the annoying part is when, when they re release an album and then they feel that because they release an album, they have a right, a, a right to walk into any church and say, yes, I'm here, I must minister. Who you help? Minister where? In which church? Could they work? Or you tell them, oh, they say, oh, I want to minister to the church. Big B, now speak to the pastor. You're like, speak to the pastor for what now? Hmm. Okay, if I speak to the pastor and the pastor says, okay, give me the name. And you give them the, the pastor checks on YouTube. You don't have anything that shows depth. Hmm. You don't have anything that shows him what you do. Hmm. He's only relying on your own word and the word of the person calling him. Hmm. And you now mess that word up. Who do you mess up? Is it you or the person? Hmm. Hmm. And then you get angry and like, you know, I released a album. They didn't push me. They didn't push the album. They keep, first question, did they ask you to release an album? I think okay. to an so, extent, we have a twisted generation. I want to ask something. So I want to ask something. Mm. So I, I want I want people to be clear that you are not trying to say that it is wrong for churches to support a minister or that it's wrong for you to have a backing of your church. But you're saying don't feel entitled to believing that because you've right. done something, <laughs> they must. No, 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 no. Don't 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 think mm. it's a right that mm. the church must because you are a praise worship leader mm. especially if you are the, if you are paid by the church you don't even have any entitlement again <laughs> mm. 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 because i i, I need to clarify that so that people don't think that big b is saying no uh, churches don't support so oh, churches don't do this church, uh, uh, church will support you now mm. but the truth is let let us say the way it is if mm. you if you are relevant to the church they'll support you mm. Mm. If you are relevant to the church, they will support you. Mm. If you are not adding anything to that church, you are just the number that comes to lead worship that anybody else can lead. Mm. By will. Mm. By will. You might not want to hear it like that, too, but that's the honest truth. Mm. 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 That's the honest truth. So, just know that nobody mm. owes you anything. Mm. I mean, there are people here on that I'm seeing right now online that they can give you examples of the, the the virtue, the time, the the energy they've poured it into ministries hmm. that didn't yield forth anything. Hmm. And then they turn to to something that was not supposed to yield any result for them hmm. and bam, they got, you know, the feedback or they wanted to, you know, why did that happen? Because by the time they turn to where they ought to turn to, their heart and the spirit responded to what they ought to receive. Hmm. Is that simple? Hmm. It's that simple. Mm. If you're supposed to serve somewhere, service is what you receive there. Mm. If you're supposed to be blessed somewhere, blessing is what you receive there. Mm. What we do most of the time is where we're supposed to be blessed, we want to serve. Where we're supposed to serve, we want to be blessed. Hmm. Big B has given me assignments. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, people see you play a lot and they'll be like, oh, big B, no. Like, so, someone told me it'd be so far fun and I'm like, there's something very different about it because for me, when, when I was, because I always do like uh, the log, the log for my show, I always do like a month stretch. So I always make sure that I send all my invites a month ahead. And yeah, when I was, I was when you told me such a long time ago, you were doing it, I was like, what's wrong with this girl? I always, like, <laughs> forever. 
I, I always do because I know you have schedule. So you once I've done that one, at least it will be your your calendar that oh this is and I've seen that it has worked over the years. And for me, it's not just the, when I had that topic in mind, someone was like, Why would you say the I want to blow syndrome? I said, But it's a syndrome. And I'm like, I think the only person that I can talk to that will be so real to me. <laughs> oh god, I just used your <laughs> I just used your <laughs> And I'm I like, no. A long, a long time ago, <laughs> you know, and something came to mind when you were just saying this. A long time ago, hmm. uh, when I was in Baptist Bible, hmm. and I had a sit down with, with one of the gospel ministers, hmm. and the person was saying to me, oh, how, do you, how are you going to get famous? You don't even have a song. Hmm. You know, there's no song <laughs> attached to your name. <laughs> there's no clinical. I mean, how are you going <laughs> to, quote or unquote, blow? Hmm. Say, I, I'm not going to blow. I'm still trying to blow. I want to be a celeb. Don't worry. When I become a celeb, you know. You know. But back to my story, I said hmm. to the person, in this event, in the next three years, hmm. when you count one, two, three praise worship leaders, hmm. if you don't count my name, come and meet me. I said, Jesus is not alive. Hmm. Like this. Hmm. And something in me just decided, you know what? It's not going to be about a song. It's not going to be about an album. Hmm. It's not going to be about a church. Just be or, Jesus. It's just going to be about Jesus mm. and and the praise of Jesus. Mm. And that's what I give myself to. Mm. How to evolve praise worship. How to bring praise up to your sitting room. Mm. How to make you worship in, in a more comfortable mm. way. How mm. to make you smile in praise worship. Mm. How to allow you ease your tension in praise and worship. Mm. How to... You know, for example, you, my generation, you tell them, give me a song of war. Hmm. And they have no idea what you're talking about. Hmm. Give me give me a song, <laughs> a song of testimony. They have no idea what you're talking about. Give me a song of praise. To them, it's all the same thing. No. Songs give, of give declaration. Hmm. To them, it's just a hmm. worship song that you slow down. That's a worship song. <laughs> you know? Big B, sorry. let me say, let me, sorry, I'm sorry that we interject for one minute. This thing happened to me on Sunday and it took me to a different level of understanding that people have that mindset that you do the worship, praise, worship, like the old, like, arranged thing in church. And when you do the entire slow thing, you've not praised God. I, I don't know if it has happened to you that someone has had that. Yes, so, so we didn't have, um, would, it, would I call it? We have a drama. They just brought you Bentley, right? Holy Ghost. They just brought you Bentley. Wow, what is that? Holy Ghost. Okay. So the the funny thing was we had some technical issues in church about um a drama and all that. So by the time I started singing, the guy didn't know what to like. I think he was he had stage fright, so he didn't he didn't so the, the song was a, a fast paced song and he didn't like play it according to like what they call it, the beat. And so when I already saw that that was what was happening I already just pulled down the pace of the song so that we can flow with him and we enjoy that that moment of worship and someone was like no there was no praise there was no this there was no that and I'm like so you think it's because we do and um, that's when we are praising God like yes that's I, it. I don't that's I it. don't I am safe <laughs> yes I, I thought I was not saved <laughs> Where is this that I am safe? I do understand what was making noise. That's why I was searching everywhere so that <laughs> I'll be sure. So for some people, they feel like until you get that fast-paced song, that's when you have praised God. But it is not that. Praising well, God is... Doesn't it, doesn't it amaze you? Doesn't it amaze you that it's okay when, when, a, church, when a church person tells you that? Or when your average congregation member tells you that, but it will amaze you that half of the gospel music ministers out there 
have no idea, have no, they have no knowledge of what it means to praise and worship. Hmm. They have no knowledge of what it means to have fellowship with the Holy hmm. Ghost. They have no knowledge of what it means to have communion with the Holy Ghost. Hmm. They have no knowledge of what it means to have conversations with Jesus. Hmm. They have no knowledge of what it means to have conversations with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They have hmm. no knowledge about it. Hmm. All they know is we want to lead people in praise and worship, sing a fast song. Hmm. We want them to sing, to lead worship, to lead worship sing your Alpha and Omega, mm -hmm. and make it very, very slow. Mm -hmm. You know. They don't know anything about having people's emotions, understanding, direction. They don't know what it is. Hmm. They have no idea of, you know, where the grass is green, grazing hmm. grass, hmm. how do you lead people here, hmm. inner courts, outer courts, most hmm. holy courts. Uh, they have no idea. Are, they don't work the priests. They are. have no idea. The bells, <laughs> they have no idea. You know, all they want is, I want a song that everybody will be singing. And they will cry. And camera will not take the picture of the person crying. And you're not putting <laughs> they don't cry. The person that is <laughs> the person that is holding the song, when they are ministered, ministered, and nothing has happened, you know, they will just start to cry on stage. Emotional worship. <laughs> they will just, oh Lord, oh Lord, there's nobody like you. Yeah. There's so no fancy. Oh God. My you are so killed me today. Are you like, okay? We are still finished now. Do finish, do finish, do finish. Come on then. <laughs> But when it's when it's true and real, hmm. when it's true and real, hmm. for example, for example, let me use Victoria Renze. Hmm. If you try to be another Victoria Renze, people will beat you off stage. Mm -hmm. Now they will beat you because the depth of what Victoria says, where she's drawing that depth from, didn't happen yesterday. Mm -mm. It's not a depth you can read in the Bible. It's a depth that comes from communion, fellowship, and service. Mm -hmm. Victoria spent years, years in the service of Nathaniel, years in the service of Christian Van Guamna, mm -hmm. years in the service of um, this late, late, I've forgotten his name now, the music man in Mina. Mm -hmm. Years. So, don't, don't wake up and then think, oh, I yeah, want to blow. I'm going to start feeling like, ah, hmm. yeah, I want to. Now you ask yourself, do you think what she's doing is about being blown? Hmm. The more she's showing that she loves Jesus, the more she's going around the world. Hmm. For her, that might be what she's been called to do. Hmm. But as I said, might be. There might be more. Hmm. For her, might just be a beginning of what she's been called to do. Hmm. Hmm. It still goes back to knowing why you are called, knowing your identity. It's... Yep. What's your identity? Hmm. Kill us, you're in. Hmm. 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 So, so some some profound things you said today. Know where God. Know your place in. Where, where God wants you to be, what what's what's God calling you to do, and another thing exactly. is surround yourself with the right set of people, spiritual leaders, people that can help you grow. Don't just attach yourself because you want to sound relevant because you know this person. Oh, I have a direct link with Big Beast. Uh, you want to have a uh, Big Beast? That's a very what cool guy. That that <laughs> Some people will be texting to say, just come say hello, Baba. In three years, the best you've done is I just called to say hello, Baba. Mm. You know, I just said, Baba, don't forget me, oh, Baba, don't. and I'm like, oh, yeah, like seriously. <laughs> but when Baba oh, get programmed, you will not come. You will not even say, ah, Baba, this is my, this is my little way of, okay, what do you need me to, you know, you know, the thing is, when I first joined Storge, funny enough, I joined Storge from the Ibadan City Press they had in um, this church, Pastor Yemi Adeoti's church, when they moved to, sorry, I like Amala, so I would say, as um, the Ojunri Amala, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. Well done. Yeah. I, 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 that's, sure. the, that's, I meet my dog, I swear, if you cannot tell me, I can see it on your face, you are local, you are local somebody living in Canada, it's okay. <laughs> 
So when when we went there and I joined Sturge and everything, it was very it was amazing to see people that were like minded that didn't they were not just trying to serve God because they wanted to like oh I want to be famous I want to be big, they just genuinely loved God, like yeah. they just want to serve. But why is it that oh, everybody has an ulterior motive for service? We just we want because to because the foundation is wrong. The foundation is wrong. In fact, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Nothing, the sir. Right, the foundation is wrong. Okay, Big B, before I let you go, someone asked the question, how do you wrong. know where you're supposed to be blessed or serve? Where you're supposed to be blessed will give you, there will be a peace around you. Hmm. At every point, you're there. Hmm. What do I mean, peace? I mean... Your assignment there, you have peace about it. Hmm. When things don't go the way they ought not to go, you won't be discouraged. Hmm. When, you, when you're in the wrong circle or when you're in the wrong, um, let me say, the wrong organization for that time, hmm. or for that particular time of your spirit, hmm. any small thing will, will take you off. Any hmm. small thing will upset you. Hmm. Any small thing would. That's when you hear people say, no, they don't even encourage me here. I'm not even encouraged. Mm. They don't even own Kiniko. Just trace it back a little to, okay, where am I, what am I sent to do here, gone, gone? Mm. You know, mm. am I here to reap the benefits of a blessing somewhere or I'm here to pour a blessing on something? Mm. You mm. know, it's very easy. It's just, but the first thing is you must learn the communion of the Holy Ghost. I've said that like a zillion times. Yes. You must understand how it talks to you. Mm. Whether you're sanguine or choleric or melancholy or whatever your temperament is, mm. once you understand your temperament, it will help you to understand how the Holy Ghost speaks to you. Mm. Mm. Now, let me make you laugh. As playful as I am, all my team members over the years, they are amazed that immediately I come off stage, the last thing I want to do is hear any sound. The last thing I want to do is hear a radio or a phone ring or somebody listening to music. I just don't want to hear anything. Hmm. And I could be like that for hours. Hmm. When I'm at Inibadong, what I want to do is be indoors, my television, my children. Hmm. I'm not interested in uh, want to go and greet somebody somewhere. Blah, blah, blah. But when it's time to step out and be all playful and oh yeah, hmm. because that is my temperament. Hmm. But mm. you have to understand how the Holy Ghost himself speaks to you, how he communicates with you. Mm. Mm. And at every point of communication, you must not argue with knowledge, not argue with wisdom. Mm. Don't argue with people who you know have failed at what you want to do, mm. and they are doing it. Mm. You want to get on radio, someone has failed us on radio, and is telling you, this is what I did that made me fail. Hmm. Don't make fun of them and say, Shabi, you failed. Shabi, you didn't do it. So, what can you add to me? What can you add to me? Hmm. Find out why they failed. Hmm. You want to do makeup? Find out why there are new names on the makeup scene now. Find out why the names you know are no longer relevant to the makeup of now. Hmm. Amazing. Amazing. God bless you, Big B. And, and Thank you, Mommy. Before. Mommy, I know God bless you, mommy pastor. <clears throat> Moving on. So I would say that you 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 find it funny that I'm saying this last thing before I go. I would say that because your mom was um a broadcaster with WNBC, is that why everybody yeah. loved me media and broadcasting in the house? Um to an extent I would say yes. Okay. And then also because we, we just had that imbibed in us somehow. Mm. I mean, the firstborn, she has a church in California. Mm. She does a bit of singing as well. She's doing well. Our secondborn is a bookworm. She she has like two PhDs, like three masters. You know, doctors from Nigeria would have encountered her because become, before you become a consultant at one particular field, you have to go through her. Mm. Um, I think it's Boya genealogy or something. One of those geology things anyway. Okay. <laughs> this lady has a master's in computer science, has a master's in herbal medicine, has a master's, master's in bone therapy. She shall like book. Has a PhD. She likes book. And then there's <laughs> Muiwa. 
We were as a bad master as a bizarre me, can you call can you As yes. Okay. Then has Sony Music certification. Then you know all those things. Then mm. comes to me. I have ST management uh-huh. and I have Iba the blood. And, and I want then, to ask, please, when are we doing that? Because I saw PhD in view. We have to finish that PhD of PhD. That PhD. <laughs> uh, you go try. You go try small. You go try, try small. Because I know to like. I don't like to read, read like that. If that book not get anything, we go review to me. It go hard to read that. Mm. But I'm interested. I'm interested in doing doing a, a, a master's course in human resource management. Okay. You know, I'm interested in that. You know, but yes, your question, I think that affected us, you know, to an extent. Yes, it did. Amazing, amazing. I don't want to go, but um, I have to release you. I've even over... I've, I've, I've stretched my time. Why do you oh. want to go? Will you get out of here? <laughs> you don't want to go. Go. You see, you see, something was standing behind you, and I don't know what it is. Oh, my. No, it was... <laughs> well, Big B, I want to say a very, very big thank you to you. Like, I am super grateful for this great opportunity to have this thank sit down. You, sit sit thank down. You. Um, it's it's been amazing hearing truth and knowing that um we can always still learn, no matter what what um size yeah. or pl- pedestal or whatnot that you say you are at and um yeah. it's been it's been amazing having you here um and Thank i hope you have more of you myself. and don't worry if i enter a battle hmm, oh my god uh, Before you enter, I would have entered Canada. Say, oh, a, amen. We can, you know, and but, to come and visit. but come to my own side, Sha. What's your own side? It's Alberta, Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta. So, why would I want to come to Edmonton for goodness sake? Why not? No? We are, but ah, oh God, oh Lord. I want to go. I want to go to where those white people are plenty. Where it's very cold. But it's here now. It's not Toronto. It's here though. Come on, you go, go. We don't even want, we don't, we are even begging. You are talking about Canada with someone that listening, but you have Amazing. Yeah. But me, I see this as Ibadan, so I still love my Ibadan. And um, thanks to everyone that joined us today. It's been an amazing time, everybody. Um, a big thank you. I can't even mention all the names, but I will say a big thank you to everybody. God bless you. And I hope you tune in next week. Um, we have another show next week. It's Still Life Matters with Anwar Didiri. Big B always comes to London, Mr. Andrew Bello. I don't know why you're not going to come back again. But we still love him in Canada. Andrew Bello, Andrew Bello is a big man. You know, I don't go to minister the places he goes to minister. I minister the big churches. I mean, this time is the small, small, shaku, shaku churches. You know, I mean, please help my life. Please, please help me. I want to blow. All right, big, big. God bless I you. Bye. Bye. You. God Thank bless you. you. We love you. And safe trip to New York. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. New York, New York. Amazing, amazing. God bless you, people. We love you, and we say a very big thank you to Big B for tune- being on the show today. It was amazing. We had a lot of technical glitches, but yes, it was still amazing. God bless you, and I'll see you next week on Life Matters with Anna Dewey.